man, Ticket TV. Let's get right into it. So a lot of you guys got to understand something, man. Wherever Skip Bayless goes, as far as doing his TV show, his TV work, whether it have been with Undisputed Now or ESPN first take as he did in the past, he kind of controls the climate of what happens, what goes on, who comes in and who goes out, who's on, who's off, who comes back as a repeated guest, and who fades away and really doesn't come back. Now, I've already explained the situation with Jalen Rose. Now, I want to explain the situation with Jamel Hill. Now, we used to always occasionally see Jamel Hill on ESPN First Take. Uh, whether she was debating Skip Bayless or whether Skip Bayless was out and she was debating somebody else, she was frequently a face on ESPN First Take. But that all came to an end, or should I say the beginning of the end, with the Chris Bosh situation. People don't remember that. So I'm here to remind you guys. Skip Bayless likes to shoot but doesn't like to get shot back at. He likes to take shots at people, but then he's ultra sensitive when somebody takes a shot at him. Perfect example, the Jalen Rose situation. Skip Bayless was taking shots, taking shots at all these other NBA players. Jalen Rose stood up for the NBA players who really didn't have a voice for themselves to speak up for themselves in studio against Stephen A. Smith. When Jalen Rose did that, Skip Bayless got caught off guard, and that was basically the end of Jalen Rose on ESPN First Take. He faded away. Y'all saw him on the next day. They discussed it, and then after that, boom, he faded away. You guys think that happened by accident? Or you think Skip Bayless is, you know, talk with the producers about how this is so disrespectful and it caught him off guard and people looking at him in a whole different way now? And see, you guys got to understand and put the pieces together with these situations. So Jamel Hill, you know, she made a mistake as far as being on that show, which actually wasn't mis a mistake in reality. You know what I'm saying? It was one of the rare good things that she actually did because, like I said before, the chick is dead quiet on the Josh Brown situation. Josh Brown for the New York Giants had alleged over 20 incidents of beating his wife, numerous 911 calls, and these chick is nowhere to be found. But when it's these dudes, other dudes in the NFL, these black guys, it's always an issue with Jamel Hill. She's always the one out there stomping her feet, making her voice be heard. But when it was Josh Brown, this chick is nowhere to be found. Where is the same vigor? But anyways, let's get back to the Chris Bosh situation. So, Chris Bosh was disrespected by Skip Bayless. Skip Bayless called him uh, Bosh Spice uh, for his play, this, that, and third. Uh, and a lot of people in the black community took offense to that because basically he was calling him out of his name, basically referring to him as a woman in a female type of way. You know, and, and, and it was very disrespectful, man. Chris Bosh had a lot of heart to go on the show and, and, and keep it professional and stand up to Skip Bayless. But then here comes Jamel Hill. And Jamel Hill made the big mistake by daring to take up for uh, Chris Bosh. And this was the beginning of the end for her on ESPN First Take as you slowly started to see her dissipate away. And then they ended up finding another avenue for her and putting her on with uh, Michael Smith on his and hers. But um, I'm going to let you... And the same thing they did with Jalen Rose. Notice how they filtered him off and then put him on Grant Land, and they had him going with... Uh, uh, what's the boy's name from Boston, man? I can't remember his name, man. You guys you guys probably know who I'm talking about. Um, I'll think about it in a minute. So let, let, let's listen to what happened, and I'll explain afterwards. Like I said, it's my, I, feel, I feel that I could have played a lot. Better. I'm my harshest critic. Okay. Let's, I just want to make sure everybody knows that I'm my own harshest critic. It's no nothing anybody in this world can say that I haven't heard from in here. Okay. You know, did, you, so, feel, did you feel but, that that was a, a fair reference to go there after your game in New Orleans? Because I'm sure you, if you didn't, if you were watching that day, you certainly heard from many people that yeah. what he called you. Yeah, I don't like the reference, but I can't say anything. Well, I, I, will, I will say this, though, um, just, I guess, as the neutral observer. The one problem I had with what you called him uh, is the fact that it drove a different kind of conversation. Now, Skip, you know, you, you drive this show, you, you're very popular, and people pick up what you say, like LeBrick, and they, and they run with it. Now, I wrote a column defending Chris because I thought that he got a lot more 
flack that he really deserved. A lot of people didn't see you play in Toronto. They didn't understand what your game was. You're not a power player. Uh, you're more of a finesse guy who is able to rebound, but that's not the strength of your game necessarily. So it was as if they had a different expectation than what they actually got. Yeah, you definitely struggled early, but I think because not just your play, but the type of person that you are, you're very versatile. Um, you come off as just kind of a worldly guy. You appreciate different things. Um, you like jokes, the commercials. And so you're a different kind of athlete than I think most people encounter. And I think they've used that to take shots at your masculinity. They picked up cues from you because whether, you know, regardless of I know how you meant it, but people look at that as you comparing him to a woman. And anytime you compare a man to a woman, it's taken into a totally different place. And I feel like a lot of people out there, whenever you have a bad game, it's one thing that people jump on you. But the Bosch Spice and other references, uh, I think it goes to sometimes a very disturbing and uncomfortable place. And that's the part where I feel like the responsibility is with you in terms of driving that conversation. Hey, I, I can't stop what people do on Twitter. I can't stop what, what people read into. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a play off a female's name. But again, I, I thought it was fitting to, to your softness strictly on court. That's now, see, I'm going to stop it right there. Now, Skip Bayless got challenged right there. And I told you guys, the one thing he don't like doing is getting challenged. And Jamel Hill came at him in a correct way, the way she challenged him and the way she stepped to him. And then this little, this little, this, this little jerk, Skip Bayless, is going to come up and say, well, I can't control Twitter. Well, you're the one who sends Twitter off. You got so many viewers watching your show. When you say something, you don't think that that has the influence to move on and, 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 and cultivate uh, millions of people. You have millions of followers on your Twitter, right? I mean, you say the same thing for these other athletes that say something disrespectful, and you say, oh, well, he can't, you know. But what happens when it comes back to you? You see, man, you guys got to understand this stuff that goes on, man. And, and and he got challenged. He got ether with facts. And um, subsequently, Jamel Hill started to dissipate from ESPN first take. Those are just the facts, ladies and gentlemen. So you guys take your own little equation from it. Just remember, though, all these situations are coincidences. Jalen Rose, Jamel Hill. Think about this. All those people that were dispensable, black, black, Rob Parker. Even though, you know, Skip Bayless, those guys could have stood up and stepped up uh, along with Stephen A. Smith for Rob Parker and helped save his job. Well, Stephen A. Smith, the resident coon, and Skip Bayless, the supremacist, wasn't having it. You know, Skip Bayless was a big RG3 guy anyways. You know, RG3 could do no wrong back in those days. We'll get into that in a different video. Ticket TV. All right, man. Ticket TV, man. Appreciate you guys listening to that video. Just take a second to go subscribe uh, and like Facebook pages. Follow me on Twitter. And, um, yeah, subscribe, like this video, subscribe to the channel. Um, all the links are below in the description box to both my YouTube channels. Y'all subscribe to both of them. And um, we're going to keep this good content flowing, man, because over here y'all going to get the real. Y'all ain't getting no buck dancing. Y'all not getting no cooning. Y'all getting 100% raw. Ticket TV.